One of our bucket list items is to travel all the road system in Alaska. This weekend, we're gonna hit Steese Highway and then Elliott Highway over to Manly Hot Springs. This is day one on our exploratory adventure up north of Fairbanks. Uh, we drove about seven hours today and we made it here to mile 36.6 of the Steese Highway, which is this pond here. And here at the pond, there's three primitive campsites. So these were free campsites and we ended up here. We've got the truck pulled in. There's two other campsites occupied, but pretty quiet place and some grayling here. So we're going to see if we catch anything. This will just be catch and release. We've got a chili dinner that we pre cooked and brought with us to heat up and then watch some Netflix and fall asleep. and right now we just passed mile marker 80 along the Steese. Uh, one thing that's cool is we're using the mile post. We've got this, you can see this is an old one from 2016. We got this before we moved up here in 2017. Um, and on trips like this when you don't have service, so you can't Google stuff and maybe you don't have your Apple Maps working, the mile post is really cool because it literally gives you mile by mile um, play by play of what you can expect um, and so you know where you're at how far you have to go things like that pretty neat so seen a porcupine so far that's been the only wildlife besides some red tail squirrels and of course Livy who hasn't been too thrilled by any of it she's just taking her nap for the morning and gonna see what we find next
right, well, we made it here to Circle City. That is the mighty Yukon River behind me. Circle was actually founded back before the Klondike Gold Rush in the early, late 1800s, I think. Um, they named it Circle City because they thought that they were at the Arctic Circle, which turns out that the Arctic Circle is a ways higher up north. Um, but population a little over 100 and an outpost for people leaving on bush planes and boats off the Yukon for hunting trips and all kinds of different things. Neat little place, but this is the end of the road, Steve's Highway. We stopped here to check out the river. Um, we're gonna make some lunch. I was gonna see if you can tell. It's some of the worst mosquitoes we have ever encountered um, up here. So making it pretty miserable. I don't think we're gonna try fishing here. I'm just gonna make some lunch and eat it on the road. So we're driving along here on the Cease Highway, and I noticed this truck go by that said Milepost on it, and it just so happens to be that this is the editor of the Milepost. Oh, yeah. This is Tom. That's, uh, that's Serena Reeves. I'm Tom. I'm the oh, okay. associate publisher. I do all the sales publisher. and advertising. Awesome. And yeah. he even gave us a brand new Milepost. So thank you so yeah, much. Very, awesome to meet welcome. you. So we came down here and found a spot at its lower Chattanooga State Recreation Area Whitefish Campground. Um, campsites are right along the river. There's only a few campsites. It's Alaska State Campground, so it's $15 a night for a site. I'm walking down to the pay station now, and then we'll get settled in, get the top popped, fish a little bit, and then have some more dinner. One thing that we like to do if we're camping in the truck rather than backpacking when obviously we're going to take mostly freeze-dried meals but when we're camping in the truck then we like to pre-cook meals ahead of time in the instapot um, or crock pot and then bring that along in the cooler so what we've got for dinner tonight uh, we've got a white chicken chili by the way this is like the easiest best recipe ever we've been making this a long time that's all ready to go and we're going to just heat it up with the MSR and the skillet. Also because technically you shouldn't really use this stuff inside your tent or inside of your camper or anything. So we make sure that it's always well ventilated in here if we're doing that. And it's gonna heat up really fast. This particular, this is the wind burner, the MSR wind burner. So it boils water within like two to three minutes. You can already hear that sizzle. It's pretty much instant and because we don't want to burn this I'm just going to spread it out as shallow as I can across the whole thing so 
so that it heats up evenly. One thing I'm really bad about is not heating things up long enough because I'm always afraid of burning it. And then Brandon has to complain <laughs> that it's not hot, it's just warm. You can already see maybe it's bubbling in there, so we're going to keep it from burning and just stir that a bit. And I'm going to hope that that's hot enough because it's all bubbling and boiling the whole thing. For this particular trip, I forgot to pack bowls, so we're just using our backpacking um, GSI outdoor mugs. Is it hot? <laughs> it's not hot. Despite the bubbling and boiling, is it warm at least? Half of it. Half of it's hot, or half of it's warm. Mine's hot. I don't know. Anyway, not eating that. We're gonna have tea. Nighttime tea is our favorite. And we've been drinking this honey citron and ginger tea that we get from Costco that we love. It's awesome because it's like it's like a jelly or like a marmalade, and you can serve it with hot or cold water. It just says add two to three teaspoons. We do more like two to three tablespoons or more. We really, really like it. And it has sliced citron, ginger extract, sundry honey, and then less than 5% of some other stuff. This is a Korean tea and it is so good. It's so, so good. We love it. For that, we're gonna boil our water with the MSR again. We've been trying to be better at using less plastic and going more sustainable. So we bought these half gallon growlers also from Costco. We love Costco. And we fill those up with filtered water before we leave the house on our trip. probably just end up time lapsing a lot of this. All right, and that's boiling. So we turn that off. Then with the lid, that gives you a safe pour spout. And then we're gonna finish dinner and drink our tea. And probably, even though this should be rustic camping, I did bring the iPad and downloaded a couple things off Amazon Prime and Netflix before we left service um, so we're gonna actually watch a movie maybe some episodes of win the wilderness before we go to sleep but we're gonna go to sleep early and try to get up extra early because tomorrow morning we start our journey on the elliott highway heading toward mainly hot springs all right it's the morning of day three uh, we woke up early this morning and had breakfast, burritos, coffee, and we hit the road back onto the Elliott Highway. Um, we're around mile marker 55, 56 right now. And we go until we hit, it's like mile marker 73 is the turnoff where you can either continue north on the Dalton Highway that takes you all the way north the furthest north you can go on the road system in Alaska all the way to Prudhoe Bay. Um, and we'll be turning the left, continuing on the Elliott Highway, so it'll be gravel from there. And Manly Hot Springs, Manly Roadhouse, here we come. So we're around mile marker 92 on the Elliott Highway, Manly Hot Springs Road. And this was kind of a bonus. We didn't know this was gonna be here, but you can actually see Denali from this road. Pretty sweet. Quick pit stop here so we can read this sign. There's a view there. They call these the Sawtooth Mountains. Pretty nice. One of the few vehicles we've seen on the road. One of the things 
things about these kind of road trips is you need to always be prepared. In this case, because we knew we'd be on pretty rugged roads like this, we have, of course, the spare that um, we always have with the vehicle, and we brought a second spare just in case. So we're using spare number one today and then hoping to make it home without having to bust out spare number two in the next couple days. After taking a look, he decided that he's gonna go ahead and try to plug it instead, and we may not even have to use a spare. So we'll see. tried that and for whatever reason it's not filling with air um, with the air compressor here so we're gonna go ahead and jack it up and take a look maybe there was more than one hole because when we felt you could tell that the plug he put in no air was coming out of that but since it's not filling up there must be another hole somewhere so we're gonna jack it up take a look and probably use one of the spares did try the plug um, the air compressor wasn't working with the plug so we thought there must have been another hole jacked it up and then once we had it jacked up then we could hear that the plug was leaking so it was a pretty big hole um, and we ended up as you saw swapping it out with the spare the spare was a little bit tricky too because this rim that we got this was like a refurbished one we got offline and you could see he was in there with the file kind of grinding down um, inside of the spokes and like where the hub goes because it, it wasn't seating perfectly um, but luckily that plug kit that little plug tool pretty much has um, serrated edges where it's like a file. So he used that, kind of filed it down. We got it seated properly and now we're ready to roll. springs over here we had read that they do a lot of fish wheels in the tanana at this spot but we didn't see any set up i'm going to show you guys real quick this one fish wheel on the side that's out of commission but you can see that there you can see that structure that's in the side of the weeds Normally those fish wheels, they'll set it out in the river and it does exactly what it sounds like. It's a giant water wheel, but it scoops up fish and that's a subsistence style for the native Athabascans in this area um, throughout most of Alaska, actually in the interior with the fish wheels. So pretty neat, gorgeous day, hot. It's like 68 degrees or something, but that sun just beats on you and it could be might as well be 80 with the way it feels. So we grabbed a quick lunch, kind of hop back in the truck and head south. We did it, we made it to the end of the road.
So we stopped for a little pit stop. A little pit stop on the Elliott Highway. We're heading back south to Fairbanks. Um, pretty much most everything we passed by was closed. There is, there's not much there to begin with. Um, the actual hot springs themselves, they closed. My understanding is they closed in 2019 when the former owner, when she passed away. So we did pull in and take a quick peek, but it was, it said, you know, no trespassing over there. Oops. It would be good if I light this first, right? And, um, so that was closed. And then the trading post, when we first passed by, the trading post was closed too. I think they were just on a lunch break though. Um, when we left town, we did notice that they had opened all of a sudden. Um, and then the only other thing was the roadhouse, the Manly Roadhouse, which is a historic building. And I was interested in that. I had wanted to stop in there and check it out, but that was also closed when we went by. I'm not sure if any of that still has to do with COVID or not. Um, but anyway, we made it to the end of the road, got to sit and eat lunch on the Tanana River Bank, which was cool. Um, and now we are just about like 37 miles or something uh, north of Fairbanks. And um, because we've been driving so much, we were listening to an audio book. And in the audiobook, they kept talking about how they were drinking coffee in the morning. And we're like, let's make some coffee. So we're parked right now by a creek called Globe Creek. There's a little bridge with a pullout. So Brandon and Libby went for a little walk for her to go potty. And I'm going to make us some quick coffee. I make a poor man's mocha. So I do the Swiss Miss. This is the no sugar added one. And then make the coffee in the MSR. For the last few months, we've been doing this pour over style. We've tried them all. We've done the French press. We've done the percolator that you do like on the full Pullman stove. We've done it all. And this one we really enjoy the most. The pour over itself has like the stainless mesh basket. You don't even have to use a filter for it, um, but it tends to clog. So we found that using the paper filter does help and not clog the stainless mesh. I'm super excited because we decided that instead of going back down the Parks Highway, which is the way that we came, the Parks Highway is the most direct, shortest route from the Anchorage area to Fairbanks. So we decided to take the more scenic route and we're gonna take the Richardson Highway, which leads all the way from Fairbanks down to Valdez. Um, we're gonna take the Richardson Highway back home, getting off in Glen Allen and hitting the Glen Highway from Glen Allen back to the Anchorage area. I'm super excited because we've only actually driven the Richardson once and we did that um, in mid-April with my mom a few years ago and it was still like spring conditions so this will be our first time doing it in summer and getting to see it in its full glory. So I'm pretty excited about that. It has gotten really, really hot in the last few hours. Um, I think it was like 78 degrees, which probably sounds perfect to most of you. Considering the fact that I grew up in Hawaii and I'm saying 78 degrees is like super hot is kind of hilarious, but once you've lived in Alaska for a few years, 78 is hot <laughs> and the sun is like, it hits direct and it feels a lot hotter than 78. Um, one thing we like to do, well, it's mostly me and then I talk Brandon into it, but he likes it in spite of himself. We like to listen to audiobooks about Alaska when we're on adventures in Alaska. Um, so this one we're reading right now is called Braving It. I believe it's James Campbell is the author and it's a true story about him and his daughter and an adventure they came on in Alaska uh, back in 2014, I think. So not that long ago. And we're about two thirds of the way through. So it's pretty fun listening to that while we're driving. Um, and then I mentioned like last night we watched some Netflix before we went to bed. We just could not fall asleep. So we kept watching episodes that I had downloaded and we watched the show Win the Wilderness um, on Netflix. And it's the show about it's a reality series with couples that are competing for a chance to win an off-grid cabin homestead in the interior of Alaska. And it's kind of funny because um, now that we're going to travel to Richardson today, I was looking ahead in the mile post at places to camp for the night. 
And I think we're going to end up camping at a place called Little Lost Lake which I'm pretty sure is the same spot where those couples hang out at camp in that show. They're at a camp called Lost Lake, just north of Big Delta. So I think that's actually where we're going to be this evening is the same place uh, from that show. So kind of funny. But we're going to get some coffee, hit the road, and keep on trucking. Black Rapids Roadhouse, established in 1902. There's a new lodge up there behind it, but this is the original roadhouse. And this is one of the last remaining roadhouses on the historic Valdez to Fairbanks Trail, also known as the Richardson Highway. an interesting spot here Department of Transportation and PF whatever PF stands for but this here is Wild Preston Richardson he was the general who actually had the Richardson Highway built way back before it was a highway when it was just a road and this is all right here in front of the Gulcana Glacier there's also this neat other sign over here, talking about women of the gold rush. And because right now we are in Isabel Pass, named for Isabel Bennett, who crossed the pass in March of 1902, back when this was just a trail. Hard to imagine the hours we spend driving in our comfortable vehicle. Other people literally walked or rode horseback and saw the sights we're seeing now before anyone else had seen them. Pretty incredible. You know, we think of ourselves as adventurers, but it really doesn't compare to what these people went through back in the day. Remarkable.
another awesome road trip in the books, seeing the Steese Highway, Manly Hot Springs along the Elliott Highway, and then coming back to the Anchorage area via the Richardson and Glen Highways. We had an awesome time and hope you enjoyed watching. Make sure you subscribe, sign up for notifications if you don't want to miss another episode. Like and leave a comment. Let us know what you want to see, what you liked, maybe what you didn't like, what there was too much of. Um, this is new, you know, I haven't been doing this much at all. So I would love to get feedback directly from you guys, what you want to see more of. Um, and we'll see if we can make it happen. We'll see you in the next one.